points. They need to get some points early and just get that momentum that they desperately need. That included double overtime the last time Lindenwood and Simo played, and away we go in the men's championship from Evansville at the Ford Center. So Lindenwood with their first possession ever in the OVC tournament. Joining from Division II this year, and the first shot down for Camperell. Simo in the double overtime loss did not have Philip Russell, one of the best players in this league. He's back in there tonight. Hanks back and healthy. Smart Harris, and we talked about that guard. And Nate Johnson, Dylan Branson. But Russell will be a big part of this. He's got to get it done tonight along with Harris. Philip Russell too strong. Burrell on the backside has the rebound. So for Lindenwood, they lost to Simo by a big margin first time around. They didn't have Kevin Caldwell, so this is mostly best against best tonight. It is, and that's the matchup that you want when you get to the turn of the time, and that's what fans here are going to get in the fourth center. So starting lineups brought to you by the Kentucky State Police. Kentucky State Police is hiring troopers. Join by going to KSP.com for more info. And second chance at it for Johnson. Right on the doorstep, can't hit. And Burrell's away with it going one-on-one. -on -one. Gives it up for Trimble for an easy two. Now, Trimble's the guy that transferred in and has come to that two-guard spot for Lindenwood, and they need that kind on the run out from him. That's a big bonus. And Branson capable of hitting from out there, especially that open. But Lindenwood out and running early up four. And you're going to see him just go to the left wing just to tap out. That gets it started. Great pass by Burrell. Great finish by Trimble. Trimble has turned up his scoring since mid-January. Joined the starting lineup right around then. Good run of play for him. And Russell down to the ground has the steal. Smart gives it up. And active hands working back for Kevin Caldwell. So Lindenwood with rallying, beating Little Rock. Two dramatic games, as dramatic as you can get to get into this tournament. <laughs> Those two teams just developed a rivalry between themselves here the first year of the conference. And none can forget that Caldwell shot on Saturday. Yeah, that got Lindenwood here, winning their final two games. One of them against Simo, as Trimble has the takeaway. It's a sloppy pass, and Burrell trying to create that fast break. Now try it in the secondary. So about two and a half minutes in, chilly start inside the Ford Center. It's going to happen. It's the ice underneath our feet. Right? It, it may very well be. Now keep in mind, albeit two overtimes, both of these score, teams scored 100-plus the last time they met. That was the first of the two wins Lindenwood had to have to get into the OVC tournament. And Johnson is doubled, and he gets stripped, and still no points for Simo. It's a great interior post defense, and we talked about needing Harrison Russell to get penetration. Unable to do it then, and really good post defense by Lindenwood. Russell checks the rear view, goes into the body. And a very, very cold start for Simo. Yeah. See, Russell was getting that before when these two teams have played. You can go back and look at it. Not so far early tonight. And Brad Horn will sub. At the media timeout, our next dead ball is Caldwell drills a three. There's the man of the hour. Stan Gerard talked to me earlier today, and check that. Kyle talked to us earlier today about Russell. Just said he just kind of just hit a wall midseason, like a lot of players tend to do at that point in time. And then after that point, once he got beyond that, and they continued to have faith in him, talking about Caldwell, he's been producing for him. And it wants another one. Going inside this time. And Caldwell, no. Second chance tipped out by Cole. And Simo starting this game 0 of 7. Harris hanging and hitting. Wow, that was on the way down. It was in desperation. Good defense by Trimble. Not the guy you think is going to provide that defense in the post, but what a shot. Now this game can get up and down. Once the shots start falling, expect a high point total. 105-102, the final last week. And that's off the hands of Cole. And Simo will have it back on the other side. And Kyle Gerdeman also said this year has been really hard on Caldwell, making the transition as a D2 guard to a D1 guard. But this is a, a three-year body of work where he's been one of Lindenwood's best players. 
SEMO STARTED ONE OF EIGHTS, AND THEY GO INSIDE, AND IT'S SHORT. AND then PLAYING THROUGH THE POST, ONE AND DONE THROUGH JOSH EARLY. AND yeah, LINDWOOD'S PLAYING WITH A LITTLE MORE ENERGY, AT LEAST EARLY THAN SEMO IS. WE'LL LOOK AT THESE uh, SUBSTITUTIONS THAT SEMO HAS MADE. And a THREE OUT FRONT, NO. REBOUND SMART. And SEMO, ONE OF THE FASTEST PLAYING TEAMS, NOT JUST IN THIS LEAGUE, BUT IN THE COUNTRY. TOP TEN IN TEMPO, AND THEY'RE ALSO VERY GOOD AT THIS, BOB. Get yeah, that's the free it. throw line. Yeah, that's that penetration we talked about. And going to get a guy like Russell shooting 82% to the line. But if it's not working there with a the jump shot, it's not working with the mid range. You can kind of lean on that penetration with Russell and Harris. Two shots. on his first. Russell served a one-game suspension handed out by the league. Accumulated too many technical fouls. So that's why he didn't play in the Lindenwood game last week. It would be hard to imagine that Lindenwood gets back in the game like they did if Russell was playing. I agree. I agree with that, but that's also, you know, they're both here at the tournament. The woulda, coulda, shoulda stuff is a lot of fun. But it did really hurt his team not being on the floor in that crucial game. But then again, you play the what ifs about the first game with Lindenwood not having one of their best cards. Yep. That tournament, you settle it right at the end. And a tie breaking game with yeah. the season on the line tonight. Yeah, and sometimes, splitting. Yeah, and sometimes you want to play those comparative scores. And at this point of the season, you can look at these averages and really draw really solid conclusions about teams. Tracy bumped his way in there. Three to shoot for Caldwell. And the pull away is an air ball. Oh, we're staying down here, though. Foul called at the buzzer. And this is going against Simo. David Ware had position. And he got boxed out and fouled. This is a big bailout here. You can see really not in your rhythm tempo. They didn't really rotate the ball a lot in that possession. And you get bailed out by the foul right there. As Israel Barnes called for his first. Call for holding, I think. <laughs> it's a takedown. Yeah, 10 yards. Harris, triple. <laughs> and Simo still haven't hit a three. 0 for 4. Really, Simo, in terms of coming just to the perimeter and shooting those outside jump shots, not looking for anything on the inside. And volleyball underneath for David Ware. And Caldwell strong. Finally recovered by Simo with early. And without Kobe Clark, who's out for the season with a knee injury, Early's had a big rebounding role. And can't keep that one alive off the Barnes miss. Simo in the last eight for Simo. A big part of the story for Simo and a bit of a slump late in the year was their injuries. And that's out of bounds. It's six minutes gone. That's not a good start. I was going to say, probably something to do with that, right? Getting some more offense. That's a lot to do with that, no doubt. Well, they've held Lindenwood to 3 of 14, so it's not like Lindenwood's run away with it and turned over. Early intercepts it. And transition three. Air ball, Adam Larson. Yeah, I noticed Larson was working on that a lot in pregame. Just a quick release, but that time just really deep. Uh, Larson gets it back on the rebound. Shoved down, though. Brad Korn was wondering where the foul was, and he does get it. Finally, Larson to the deck, and that's a big, tall guy with the same physique as Korn, and we'll come the other way. And again, this one's not going to be a 105, 102 game at this pace. And that's the thing that you look when you look at Simos, some of their game numbers, you've seen somewhere that you know, they've given up 80 and 90 plus to their opponents, and games that they've won it's been in the 60s and low 70s so they are just really sporadic in terms of their offensive production and it have been to start and early get some going with a little floater that's their first point of the paint tonight and got them going at the free throw line with russell so simo in touchdown just one despite the cold shooting start at 15 percent Cole going to screen high and try and create something. Look how wide open the middle of the lane is for this one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, Williams got hooked, and he scored. Yeah, that's what you did. It created it out. Open that lane up with, with Ware and Cole flashing high, and that was the difference right then. About that with the left arm, clear it out. 
It was kind of a double hook, wasn't it? It was. And about six feet of distance, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> Tommy Williams from the St. Louis area from Belleville completes the three-point play. He's a guy that can turn on the scoring for Lindenwood. He scored 21 points out of nowhere against UT Martin in an early February game. Philip Russell, step back. Oh, in and out. Nasty look at a step back. Yeah, that was great defense by Williams on Russell. And again, a little surprised not the penetration by Russell in that instance. Childs off, rebound Russell. And both of these teams are just really struggling. And Russell cut off, Branson whips in there, rolls out in the follow-up from Early. Good job from Early coming to the weak side and just finishing off. And that's the point of the paint I was calling Seymour out for not having at that point, so give him one, give him two rather there. Early's answered the call twice now. Back to Williams, back to back and ones for Tommy Williams. Same side of the floor, same offense. Lindenwood has definitely been a little bit streaky as far as some of their downturns. Hadn't won three games in a row all year. So it was in doubt that they would get here, but it was the two wins to close it out. In double overtime against Simo, and then in overtime against Little Rock. Got them into the first tournament that they've had a shot at. You know, when, when you had to make a play, when they had to win a game, they were able to do it down the stretch. And, you know, one of the neat things about playing in a tournament is, yes, you get double buys and single buys. When you're eight seed or a one seed, you're in the tournament. You got a chance. Two teams held out, but Lindenwood has earned it. He'll be NCAA tournament eligible in 2026 as Early gets blocked. Stays with it. Early's been an early surprise. Oh, you were sitting the on that one. I, I've been waiting. In, in my uh, in my research, I, I had that in there. So I, I got that worked into the first nine minutes. So good shape. That was research. You just looked at his name. Well, I know, but I also put in the fact that it's still early in the game. So to draw the two together was successful. Well, Cam does not have a last name early. That's Burrell. He's had a good early start. Four-point lead for Lindenwood. Burrell's got four on three rebounds. Russell is the guy at the top of the scouting report. Quick crossover, and he's in for the layup. I understand that was created solely by Russell and his speed to the right. He did not get a screen, did not get a pick and roll, anything at the high. It was one-on-one, -on -one, beat his man to the bucket. Anybody you ask about Philip Russell, well, there's Burrell, and he's fouled. So Burrell. Let's go back and take a look at, at Russell here, and just pure one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to be beyond the arc. He's not going to get a screen or anything. He'll just blow right by Williams for the bucket. I can't say this exact quote about Philip Russell, but we've asked around the league a little bit, even some of the non-conference teams Simo played. Anybody that has coached or played against Philip Russell, they say he's got some bleep to his game. You can fill in the blank on that, but he's got some bleep to his game, meaning he is a, a tough, tough out. Yeah, he, he is. And if you don't need to screen for him to create offensive schemes, what a plus that is to your offense. And that's what was missing. Remember all those jumpers early on that SEMA was shooting? At one point, they were one of eight, one of nine. And they've kind of maybe gotten into their flow. Burrell's had a strong start. And Branson for three. Books that. I'm supposed to say something about Branson and Missouri, right? Let's go to the Ozarks. <laughs> Trying to go hang out with Jason Bateman in the Ozarks? Uh, that could be a, that could be a stretch. And Caldwell behind the screen, little shake. Oh, we got Branson to fall down. The shake, the stop, and then the restart off a double screen. In that case, the drive and kick Russell extra pass. Branson attacks the closeout and called for the charge. Little surprise, Branson to go to. Said we'll go the other way. So Branson down to the bench. 
foul trouble for Simo. Both have two. Three is off for Chris Childs. We're at 55 tonight. Typical number 30. Simo despite the slow start within three. Here's Barnes. Can't tie it. And that uh, was not corralled by Harris. Harris hesitated for a moment, thinking it was the uh, last touch by Lindenwood, but that's not the case. Harris is not moving real quickly, sauntering down the floor. There's a good look at Cal Gerdeman. What a education in Division I basketball he and his team have experienced this season. And here's the coach of the final three years in Division II. Trimble strips. Oh, good effort. Down in that baseline. But Simo could not save it with Smart. That hurt a little bit, huh? It did. He got up rather quickly, so that's good news for everybody. A little bit different than the uh, tumble earlier by Larson. It's two on Barnes. That's three players now that Brad Moore likely have to sit down. He's not sending a sub for Barnes, but Larson and Branson both sat down. Going right back at Barnes. Caldwell cut off in the lane. And falling away short. Oh, rebound for Smart. Really Caldwell had no outlet. Oh, Turnley up ahead for the two-handed jam. I was early in on time. Might want to wait a, at least a full 30 before they go to that other end of the floor. It's shaking. Quake from Josh Early. And a hand check. And Russell and Childs going at it on the baseline. Josh Early, no float game this time. All jam time. I'll leave that one alone. That's the thing of beauty right here. This is an even better perspective. Thanks for fighting the temptation. <laughs> I think that's a four plus on the Richter scale there. Earthquaking. We're going to find out a bit or two about Lindenwood shooting free throws here, too, because you're going to have plenty of opportunities for the remaining eight minutes. Well, that was the first one and one. I don't think everybody on the floor knew it. Harris pull up jump. Simo's got their first lead of this game, Bob. And hard to believe that after being one of eight to start. They've kind of steadied the ship now. They've still got to fight this foul trouble. And play a little bit better defense in these ensuing possessions. Halfway down and out on the three for Keenan Cole. Well, these rims are lively. They are. You're right. A good look for Cole. He's the top three-point shooter for Lindenwood at 46%. He's got the on-ball defense. Harris with the step back. And Childs the rebound. And to your point again, they have the screen to create for Harris. Not the case for Russell. Child streaking all the way in. That's just flat out bad defense, Connor. There's no excuse for that. Child just blew by three defenders at the free throw line. We got an off ball whistle. Yeah, Cole got Harris play, but he's been the one consistent in that program, and he's very happy with. Where he's at at SEMO and trying to build that program up. And I think, I think it strikes me early on. Both teams have 24 shots on goal already. Seems like a lot fewer than that. He tried at 33%. Slow runner. Burrell. You saw Brad Korn there. He comes from a great basketball yes, education. Does. As a player, his two head coaches at Southern Illinois, Bruce Weber, who he coached for later, and then Matt Painter, the head coach. At Purdue now, of course. I haven't seen a picture of uh, Weber lately. Has he cut his hair? <laughs> he has. Okay, good deal. He has. He's doing TV now. That's right. He had to clean it up a little bit. There's a follow-up off of the Russell miss for Nate Johnson. And Coach Weber actually did one of the games that Brad Corn coached in this year. They, play, they played at Iowa, and the old boss of Brad Corn was doing the color on Big Ten Network. One full circle moment there. Lindenwood down one, and Russell picks the pocket. 
And plays off at two feet and finishes through the contacts. Back to your comment earlier about Russell and the speed, right? Yep. That's an on example there. Russell hunts another one, taps it from Tracy, but right back into the hands of Cole. And on the second try, Burrell with the finger roll. Nate Johnson, pretty much uncontested shot there, allowing that bucket. Now this game's getting a little more tempo. And that's what you expect from Simo. They're right up there with Alabama and Arizona as far as pace nationally. And the short offensive rebound. Barnes, no. Got resistance in there from Trimble. There's something that's been a recurring theme for Lindenwood this season. Trimble gets his fair share of rebounds. And Caldwell makes it pay with the three. So Brad Porn. I have. I've been to four different conferences, and I couldn't agree more with what you just said in terms of kind of getting away and when you talk to officials too, it was mostly supposed to be enforced on three-point shooters kicking their legs out. Not that block charge call. And Simo out of the timeout and bang into three. So Evan Urscher off the bench, the freshman. Simo's getting contributions throughout after having gone to that bench early. And Caldwell on the take, and he gets fouled. Caldwell went to the opposite side of the rim. You see the numbers for Simo just heating up a little bit, starting that 1 of 8 and then the 2 of 15, and since then they've gone 8 of 15, and that will get it done better than 80%. Lindenwood, somewhat along those lines as well. They started 3 of 15, and since then they've heated up as well, 7 of 12, and you just kind of see those numbers rise. From the upper 20s at one point, we checked in a moment ago, it was 33, and now we're in the mid-upper 30s in terms of shooting percentage right here. The usual suspects have heated up, one of which has been this guy here, Caldwell. And we've seen Russell Harris. And now we're going to watch Smart. You're one of the timeouts. He's back in the game for Simo. Had his shoe off and was getting some attention to his ankle. And he's opposite wing here. Russell short, and rebound torn out of there by Cole. And Childs had a look at a transition three, close out from Harris, and he forced a little speed up. Yeah, we, you know, we talked about the difference in size, and Lindenwood, their interior guys are playing much bigger than they are. It's listed on the charts as well, and that's one thing that's that and the guard play. Of course, that's both elements of a basketball team in some respects, but those are the two elements that Kyle Gerdeman has been kind of surprised by as he's gotten in the OVC, particularly, as you mentioned earlier, the guard side of it. But they just they'll need a little more to. size, yeah. Uh, something they'll have to recruit to. Yeah, exactly. And the question with Kyle this morning was, well, you know, the obvious thing that's every bit of discussion now, the transfer portal is going to be that way, or is it going to be developing four-year players, which are kind of the hallmark of a D2 program? Here. But two weeks left in the season, there are about six teams that still could have won the championship. You look at the preseason poll, there are five different teams picked to win the league. And that is, uh, you know, at some point in time, you think, as the old saying goes, you kind of settle down a little bit and get to figure this league out. But the three teams that have entered this league this season have made a huge difference. And all of which are either here or, in the case of Little Rock, was playing for a chance to be here at the final uh, Saturday of the season. And it could be some kind of week with that type of parody. Who's called Wells? Trade on three. Can't let him have that. He's getting the confidence. I mean, obviously, hitting a game winner to put your team in a tournament will do that for you. But even in the microcosm of this game, just want to make sure you just don't let him heat up and get that kind of confidence because remember that was lacking from Caldwell earlier in the season. Suffered the slump that you often see. Got right back at him. It is not for Evan Urscher either. He's got a confident outside stroke with a three and now a deep two. Is he coming off the bench, Brad? We need to ask him that, right? He's only given him a point a game this year. Yeah, look how Linda would spread the floor here. Now they'll run Trimble up, which is not an ordinary situation you see from your guard. Caldwell back-to-back -back hits. And what it did was create that opportunity for Caldwell. He got the screen that time and shot over 
This should be good tonight. Russell and Caldwell both playing against each other for the first time. Caldwell's got 16 in the first half on four threes and an answer back three. It's Ursher for a second time from outside. So he's already got his season high. Most he had in the regular season was seven, eight first half points for Evan Ursher. Down to that dunker spot, the reverse won't stick. And Keenan Cole has it cleared out of there with Smart. Cole made a smart move, then kind of using that rim as another defender and working around it. Just could not finish. Russell putting the shake on. Russell immediately recognized that two three zone with the first. down. He's hurt my head to the other end of the floor. You can see Smart chirping now, and I understand he was uh, at the point of finishing that play. Walk right by Shane Staggs. And so he's high fiving his own guy. What do you think he's saying there? Well, in the case of having completed a successful play, what one of those uh, seven words you can't use in television, right? I don't know. That, that, that's going to remain a mystery. Now he's going to shoot the and one. Was it finally I got a call? Maybe something like that? But he got the end one, then called for the tech. And smart finish, tech and all. Can give Seema the lead back. Minute and a half until the break. And he does. And don't look now, but after that slow start, and we've documented how the shooting has improved, you're looking at a game that's already turning in the 80s right now. Yeah. So <laughs> it's kind of come true to form. It's just taken a while. Simo's for their last four. Perfect. Last four trips down the floor. We figured they'd heat it up. Went for the slow start. Watch the rotation here, see who we can create for Caldwell again. And Cole on the take. Good hands from Russell, and he's fouled. That's Cole good defense. Yeah, yeah de that's good defense here by Russell. We don't talk a lot about defense and Philip Russell often, but that was really good defense, steal of the ball, and Immediately the reach in foul by Lindenwood. And hands to the temple for Kyle Gerdeman. Because Cole's in foul trouble now. So three fouls on Cole. Let him run with the two. Lindenwood's got back man. And sprinkled in that zone. Couple trips. Final minute, first half. Winner gets Tennessee State tomorrow in the quarterfinals. 10 on the timer. Russell draws a crowd. Harris drills the three. That was beautiful. Well set. As you indicated, very deep in the clock. Great ball rotation. Great technique. Got it done from 26. Thanks, Bob. You don't have to compliment me. It's early, and I'm already on. To, and we got, I've got three more opportunities to do that going forward. Playoff. Hey. <laughs> There's a three. And an air ball. Hey, if you think both of these teams have gone up and down the floor once they kind of hit their stride, what do you see Tennessee State tomorrow night? It'll be a great matchup with either one of these two. That's a, you, you know what everybody's thinking about if it ends up being SEMO and Tennessee State. There was an 11 technical foul game that those two play in the regular season. Not super lovey-dovey. Uh, game took about three hours to play. Yeah. <laughs> Ran out of time on my ESPN Plus rewind window. <laughs> Five until halftime. Harris off the pivot. No. Tapped around. And to the finish line in this first half. So Linden was resting, in my opinion. Sebo was getting rebounds better. And lead slightly in points to paint. They got seven more shots on goal. This halftime stats brought to you by Digital Scoreboards, proud supporter of the OVC. Digital Scoreboards provides indoor and outdoor displays. Second half starts with a Chris Harris miss. Reminiscent of the first half, right? Uh, cold, cold, cold to begin, and then the shooting numbers that you just saw more toward the mean on the season for both Lindenwood and Simo. As is the scoring overall, but again, I think it's really important 
SEMO really kind of rallied to sorts. Get seven more shots on goal, I think, is a big deal for them as far as the first half goes. The winner gets Tennessee State tomorrow. Penny Collins and Tennessee State staff here watching tonight. Winner gets the fourth seed, and that's an offensive foul on Keenan Cole. And, Bob, that is massive. He had three in the first half. That's number four. Yeah, he was a force early inside for Lindenwood, and then just really picking up those fouls really took away his effectiveness. So now the big question is, how long does he remain in the game? And he is Lindenwood's top scorer with those 13 and a half points a game. And quick hand check on Burrell. So what do you do now if you're Kyle Gerdeman? How long do you let Keenan Cole ride on this? Well, he's fouled out rather frequently this season. That's a big number to look at. It. I, I think you got to stay with him and try and get him to the, at least the next media timeout. Then you probably got to sit him for a while. But again, no one has that size and, frankly, talent on the Lindenwood bench. They have to just roll the dice. And Harris likes that mid-range. Not here. And smart and unintentional pass into the post. No bounce, but Harris still strapping for it. He gets fouled. All of a sudden now Harris again. We talked about Harris and Russell with the drives. Now we're seeing the guards kind of play a little bit lower in the post. And actually, the Lindenwood staff is coming over just verifying with the official score, Connor, that indeed he's got four fouls. Cole's got four fouls. And now he's going to ask them to check the book. Kyle Gerdeman is. It's really an interesting move by him. And Let's see if they'll create a, a timeout. They're going to do just that now. Okay, so the official stats right now have Burrell, who was just called for this foul, with three. They have Cole with three instead of four. So if the official live stats are the same as the official book, then they took a foul away from Keenan Cole, which is super important to keep him on the floor. And again, if both are playing with three, you can expect both to remain on the floor. So there goes my theory about that. But you called well, quick fire. And Cole just banged in there, and that is officially the fourth foul. In a half a game, Cole, the top score for the Lions at 13 and a half. I think for both of those, it also limits the ability to screen high and create opportunities for Caldwell and Trimble. How about Burrell? Still aggressive. He got the block with the three fouls. Now we got a whistle off ball. And Russell was called, but they did go flop on Russell. And he's been called for that. I think that's five times now this year that Russell's been called for a flop. So he, he's again, going that. back to the issues that you had mentioned, you know, where the league it reprimanded him missed a game and so one at the line down for Lindenwood chasing three Caldwell's staring right at Chris Fuller he wanted to reach in on Russell and play on though here's Childs on the take on Harris and taken away and to the full court Smart gives it up Johnson can't finish the jam no look pass. Beautifully done by Russell. So Get the Johnson jam after all. Here. Johnson got the second try. How often do you see two dunk opportunities in a single possession about five seconds apart, Max? That's Russell Caldwell here. This is the matchup I'm going to keep an eye on. And notice they did not come out again and screen for Caldwell. Nice touch. Cam Burrell. Simo by four at halftime. Keep it here. Johnson on the reattack for Simo. Yeah, so if first you don't succeed, right? Take a look at this. It's going to go right back out. Tipped out by Branson. They'll feed it right back in the post again. And Johnson will finish with authority. Change that quote on you. First you get rim stuff. Jump higher. That's the case of that case. And it paid off for Simo. Johnson packing it in. Russell zooming off a screen. And got Johnson again. As Russell darted down the baseline, to your point, Connor, 
That's when Johnson filled the lane, got that opportunity right there. At the line, you will see Monique Johnson for two shots. Johnson at 56% of the year here. So he's due for a make on the second. That's exactly right. The old announcer's jink. But in, in this case, Johnson's going to continue to get some high percentage shots in and around the rim. He's got to finish those. Remy Lamuvu in for Cam Burrell. Kyle Gerdeman stopping Burrell. Playing with those three fouls in the second half. Johnson true to his percentage. And probably if he can get Burrell beyond the next media timeout, maybe another four minute spacing then and get Burrell in for the stretch run. And remember, media timeout in the OVC at the under 17. Takes away that floater timeout. A little different stagnation. And a foul. And Childs got in on Branson. Yeah, Branson played good defense until he, the penetration took him into the lane. And he's complaining he got pushed off. But Called for the reach around at Branson. At the line, Paul Lindenwood, Chris Childs. Two shots. Trying to figure out my geography from the Bronx to St. Charles, Missouri, when it relates to Charles. Childs, rather. That's a long way to St. Charles is not one of the five boroughs of New York. No, it's not. However, the Bronx is. Of that, I am certain. Got them both. And Childs coming off that explosive final weekend. Put 25 on the Red Hawks in the first game of the final stretch. Told he got his jersey torn in the game, and that's why he's had to go to 55 tonight. Here's Russell. Blocks. Lamuvu off of the bench with a big defense. Caldwell on the attack. And offensive foul. Branson is really getting it done defensively. Were to pull a shocker, go eight seed in the championship, it would be the team in the championship that played them that would get the automatic bid. And it, it would be Lindenwood at USI, for example, that you would have a situation where the highest seeded team in the semifinals go to the big dance. We had the situation last year in the Atlantic South with uh, Bellerman. Bellerman was transitioning from Division Two. That was the regular season champion out of that league that went. The athletic directors voted before the season that it would be the final team remaining in the OVC tournament that would go to the NCAA tournament. There's Trimble. No. And kept alive with Caldwell at half court. The shot clock did not reset. It's down to six here. It did not hit rim. And Caldwell, Caldwell doesn't hit rim either. So with that in mind, Southern Indiana 7 seed, Lindenwood 8 seed, they theoretically could meet the championship. If that were to happen, then it would be the final highest seed remaining. Correct. And that's because there's a four-year window of transitioning into Division I, mandated by the NCAA. And that's a charge. Caldwell takes it. Well, you see the Harris-Caldwell matchup on both ends of the floor. Let's watch Caldwell with a defensive technique right here off the left dribble. That's easy and going the other way against Harris. And they bring Russell out defensively on Caldwell. And neither team's led by more than seven. And a hand check out wide on Barnes. Number three on Israel Barnes. The Omovu with a big screen. About 30 feet away from the basket. He's come in. Lamouf, who's come in, giving them good minutes. Big block, good screening. They're going to need it with a cold situation. They just turned the ball over. Oh. Wow. And Caldwell stepping over the sideline. Yeah, you're looking at your teammate, and you're thinking they're making eye contact with you. You're just going to toss it in bounds and get into your offensive rotation. And then your teammate turns away from you. You're not making eye contact at that time. And you try to reach back and get the throw. And that's exactly what happened. That's a big turnover. Barnes trying to get it back. And he does. Brad Korn let him play through the foul trouble. And he hits him with a big basket. 
I think reason Barnes is probably trying to play with that. And Trimble got it. As smart is still suffering from that ankle. He's behind the seat of bench. Now Trimble's awake a little bit here. I think look what the off guard's got to offer. The drive just gets it to fall. And Trimble's one of those young men I met during media days. 130, 140 days ago right here in Evansville. And he had just come into the program, kind of hesitant in answering questions, kind of, you know, trying to feel his way around. And talk to Cal Gerdeman. He is really – I've been looking for King Tut for a while there. I saw the backside of it last week. And Trimble is just really coming to his own lately. Saw King Tut's backside? What? Watching the uh, Lindenwood Little Rock game. Cameron. see the young man and only when they had the court storm was I able to see King Tut back and he's back in full gear tonight. There he is. That's good stuff. Color coordinated and everything, Connor. Lindenwood's gone back a little bit to that 2-3. The hip check there by Tracy defensively. Watch these fouls. Already team seventh, and you're shooting one and one, and you got nearly 15 minutes left in the game. And two of your key players are in foul trouble. Russell does this as well as anybody else in the league. Get to the free throw line. Receiver wants it. You, know, you, you look at analytics with them, and an average of seven fouls drawn per game. And you're thinking, oh, that's kind of a random number, whatever. Uh, that leads the league, but you also put that in context of the team foul situation. That's bonus time just with one guy. Yeah, you see where you see where it equates to, and carrying that forward, 82 percent, a little bit better from the line. So you're making the most of it once you get beyond that seven that you create singularly by yourself. Connor playing a little money ball tonight here, first round. Been compared to Jonah Hill. You're right. There's a uh, steal for Russell. And Ursher out running and creeps it over the rim. Ursher really kind of emerged, if you will, in the first half. And Simo's glad to see that kind of activity pick up here in the second. Hadn't had a field goal in five games before tonight. And a tough two for Chris Childs. What about Childs getting away with a clear out with a right hand as he dribbled left in the lane? I thought offensive foul there. I did. And then Mathis stags full of three officials. Let him play on. And Russell hung up a little bit, got it back, and finished it. Yeah, early set a really good screen high. And now, Lindenwood's also got to be mindful of that, not to just try and bust through those screens that are set high. They pick up some fouls as well. And real quickly, Morrell's going to come back into the game. Child's got to his spot. And Ursher saves it. Oh, it was off him. Wow. Ursher pops up and says. And not too far apart, the two. We're hoping for a good crowd here with USI in the building, and they have played indeed some very good D2 matchups in seasons past, and it's great to see them both in the OVC. Brian Baroni's we'll talk some more about that when we get to it, but he's beginning to quietly build a really solid program at SIUE, and they're in the tournament now, the third straight season under him. That's the 6 7 matchup coming up next. Hand check on the drive for Caldwell. How about Russell down the other way, going into the body, get his 11 to 12 points for Simo. And I think, again, given the injury foul trouble that Lindenwood has, Russell wants to drive. Harris wants to drive. I think you can see even more of that in the final 13 minutes. Lindenwood running triple off a bunch of screens. That's a good point because I was a little surprised that Russell was, or rather Caldwell was the one inbounding the ball. Trying to set for Trimble. There's Childs, a little shake. Can't get free of Ursher and finally does. 
Pretty good defense there, Bob. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you on Ursher. Russell finds the spot. And a mid-range hit for Philip Russell. Little elbow right there. Watch out. With Russell heating up. And Child's going to take it right to him and pick up the foul. Russell with the foul. Near our broadcast position. And when Shane Staggs having a conversation. And the top two scorers in this game for both Lindenwood and Simo. That Russell at 18 a game, foul trouble. We got Keenan Cole, 13 and a half a game for Kyle Gerdeman, foul trouble. I just think you're going to have a back and forth battle here. Six points has been the greatest gap between these two. That was very early for Lyndon Wood and back to the rim for Smart. Yeah, just played on the perimeter. Smart coming down the floor. He's in a lot of pain. Connor, you can just see it. Well, Caldwell got sped up. And Harris bumped in midcourt by Williams. That's a bad foul for a team that's already in foul trouble. That is a bad foul at midcourt for Williams and Lyndon Wood. That's his second. Forgivable for Williams. Just his second as far as personal foul trouble, but all these fouls, everybody's in the bonus the rest of the way. Yeah, adding up. We have a guy like Harris to the free throw line who 77% on the season, but again, it's the opportunities you talked about in the analytics and what these guards for SEMO were able to create in terms of fouls against. Well, if there's one thing that Brad Corn's team has been elite at this year, it's getting to the free throw line, especially with Harris, who's there now, and Russell. And you know, Corn is a college student. Collins player was a pretty good free throw shooter for a big guy. You know, that's always a knock on the big guy. They don't shoot free throws well. Brad Corn shot very well. I bet he could still play, too. Tallest coach in the OVC. By a long stretch. Uh, underneath, there's Cam Burrell. And that trims it for Lindenwood after Harris stretched it out to the biggest lead of the night for Simo. And kicked ball. And keep it with Simo. Burrell got a foot on it. I thought it was off Russell's foot for the moment. Indeed, Burrell. Shot clock back at 23. Let's see what these guards do. See if they run that perimeter play. Just kind of rotate and get a screen. See, there's four players on the perimeter now. Now they're good in their offense. Harris. And air ball. Caldwell slides it down. Burrell contested shot way off. Here's Smart with speed breaking it. Russell in for Johnson for the layup. I like the big guy just instead of trying to dunk it because of where he was so deep underneath the basket, just up and laying it off the glass. And a foul with Childs on the handle. And Johnson. Uh, oh, absolutely. I have a. Uh, Devices that allow me to do that. Okay. <laughs> Kyle Gerdeman seen his team go down at nine points, but cut into it with Childs at the free throw line. So the biggest Simo has led tonight at nine. That's a 16 point turnaround, by the way. Simo trailed by seven early. Also got 13 points off 13. Linda with turnovers. Simo's been very clean down here, only six giveaways tonight. And haven't fouled a lot in comparison to Lindenwood. Barnes, good feed early on the doorstep. No, hands in there for Lindenwood, and early reattacks. The play was designed to get to early. And able to get it to him just a little bit too late as they rotated across the baseline and then reversed the ball. Kobe Clark was with the Simo team, and when they had him, Simo looked like a contender for a championship. Still get it done this year, and in this week, it's out of bounds, diving over the table. And we have some spillage. What did we lose down there? Coke? Regular Coke. Not a zero or diet Coke. Power stripping and Coke, it's not bad. 
All electronic devices seem to be intact. And Caldwell steps back. Ooh, that went around every part of the rim. As did Caldwell's elbow against the defender. Here's Harris for three. Short. Good. Caldwell reels it in. Up ahead, and Burrell's all alone. I like it again. Big guy just off the glass. Another flashy with a dunk. And Harris probing. And just bullying Caldwell in. No hit. Uh, Caldwell held his ground, and we're going to play on, Connor. Caldwell going against the taller guys. Well, might have taken an extra step or two there. You're not going to let him have one, are you? First two set uh, offenses as well. Now you said travel. Yeah. That was two separate possessions, so Connor. I, keep your mind. I know, but short time as Russell goes baseline. What are you going to say there? What's the critique on that? Two points. <laughs> it's all clean when Russell yeah. does it. I love the guard play. As the old saying goes, we'll have to check the tape, right? I'm sure you'll be breaking it down midnight in your hotel room. There's Burrell. And Lindenwood wanted goaltend. Foul came doubly significant, Bob. Philip Russell just got tagged with his fourth foul. Remember, that's the top score for Simo. And he and Cole and Lindenwood playing with each. So Burrell makes it a two-point trip. Now has his fourth double-double of the season. And Lindenwood has it back to five. Russell staying on the floor with the foul trouble. Drive and kick. And Smart hits a three. Just in time to avoid the charge by Russell. He dishes it back out. A three-point shot good. And a reach on Smart. Oh, Simo is getting ready to break. Smart is told to be smart. Fire shirt. Look at the penetration by Russell and the kick out just in time. It's smart with the long three in the corner. Back and forth with that ankle, but he's back on the floor now. And pretty good elevation on that three attempt. Remember, Smart had the technical call on him earlier. It's probably part of why Ursher came in there and said, be smart here. I don't think anybody was more excited than Smart when that free throw was missed by Williams. You got to be careful here. It's an eight-point game, and you had mentioned lead has been his greatest nine. Now these are opportunities you can't leave on the table. And Lindenwood just left two points. Oh, Smart's still limping a little bit. And he's playing through gritted teeth. You see him grimace a little bit as he ran down on offense. Lindenwood back to the 2-3. Just got to watch for the uh, pick and roll high with Johnson. He's back down to the paint now. Russell slides off and kept alive. Johnson, good hands. Well, Russell stole the pass intended for Smart. See if he can dribble here with this bad ankle. Oh, ankle's looking all right. It was reported he had four, but he has three. Good for Simo. Three, not four fouls for the top score. And Smart completes the three-point play. Yeah, I'm confident Cole's got the four. He does. After the back and forth that we had to sort that out. So. Yeah, they cleared that up with the official book. Four fouls for Cole, three for Russell. Cole, Cole is back on the floor here. I'm going to say what Cole needs is a couple of twos to try and find. He's already touched it once in this possession. Let's see if they rotate and get it back to him. We're deep in the possession. Child circling around and out of bounds off his knee back to Sima. Now we're going to see some press come up, and this is where Lindenwood was able to really force Little Rock out of tempo on Saturday. That big win on the Caldwell game winner is probably, even though they're saddled with a lot of foul trouble, some of which can't be certain of, it seems like. They're going to have to go to some kind of press and try and speed Simo up, which really, Connor, plays into what Simo wants to do. And Russell falling away. Good defense there on Russell. And trip on the backcourt. Oh, excellent. Good point. I'm hoping where he's at, he's getting good intel. 
All look good on the first back to a 10 point game. Now, interesting, they're going to go defense for offense with Cole. Or check that, it will be defense. Defense on the other end up coming from Lindenwood, so Cole will sit. Well, Lindenwood, as a team, does not miss a lot of free throws. Tops in the OVC at 75% as a team. Caldwell leaves one out there. If you're Lindenwood, you need three, perhaps four stops in a row and score as well. Just got to be real careful here with six and a half to go. Seamus made three of their last four. Whipped pass by Russell. Ursher steps in. <clears throat> Not here. Follow up won't go. And Caldwell lets it go. It's staying with Simo. I think in that case, if you're Caldwell, you, you've got to go after the basketball. He could have gotten to it. It wasn't even a 50-50 ball. It was in his favor. He should have went into the Simo bench and gotten the ball. Gives him a new clock and a new opportunity for Simo. It ends up being all right after yeah. all. Lindenwood side. Now they got to get Cole back in for offense, and they'll do just that. Well, you mentioned offense, defense, sub going on. I think we're going to have to have that for the rest of the way. Maybe last three, three and a half, he just stays in the game, particularly if this lead remains at 10 for Simo. Caldwell has been the top guy tonight for Lindenwood. 19 points. Can't add to it. And Harris the rebound, and Caldwell goes down. This is a five on four, and Ursher rattles in a three. Oh, man, Caldwell down behind that play. So holding that right foot. I don't know if there's a, a, a cumulative effect from the hit he took earlier on that one, but a good look from our crew. And Russell stepping on it. So top score for Lindenwood in this game out, and Tracy to the free throw line. A rare opportunity here. Yes, he missed it. Tracy got called for talking. Remember, him and Russell came together in that huddle. Said something to Russell as he passed by. It was at most like four words, you know? Yeah, so That's a tough break for Lindenwood, too. I mean, of all situations, when you had a chance to cut into a 11-point lead at the time, and free throws, and plays dead, no clock running, you got a chance to climb back into it, and then you commit a technical foul like that. Wow. I wonder if Russell baited him a little bit. He was, he was walking by him. I wonder if he whispered something. That's what Cal Gerdeman believes because he's having a conversation with one of the officials. <laughs> and after that Strange sequence, game. Yeah, you yeah. just got to pay attention, folks. Stay tuned. Plus eight in scoring for Simo on this 10-2 run. Looking for some distance. Quarterfinals tomorrow against Tennessee State for the winner. And second chance for Russell and Simo. I think this would be smart for... Simo to run a little bit of clock here. Get it under five minutes before you even take a shot. It looks like they're going to do that. Russell gets it down to ten. And Johnson skying for the rebound, but a foul. Yeah, they really cool. Oh, Lindenwood, check my notes, but I believe they were close to 15 or 16 behind against Little Rock in the second half. Came back to win on Saturday, so it's not uncommon. And the comparison between Lindenwood and Simo bears a little more observation, but got back into the Simo game too. Did, went to yeah. double overtime. That's right. And nothing. Missed the free throws. Very difficult. Cole shoots it at seventy-five percent. Had a couple trips ago. Caldwell at 73%. Lead points out there for the Lions as they try to march back. Here's Harris on the cross. And 
floater, no. Early muscles it back up. And two good looks at it for the Red Hawks, and they'll get a third chance. That's tough, but Cole just cannot be as aggressive as he would like to be in that circumstance. He got great position underneath on the first miss. And just couldn't combat Harris in the follows. Good pass, Russell. Oh, ball moving around. Nice triangle there to get it to Branson. About that. A lot of traffic in the lane there. Cole on the other side. Just playing defense with his feet planted. Sebo able to reverse it and get Branson the opportunity. Childs on the spin, discarded Branson. And a rebound for Simo. And a foul with Burrell into the back of Harris. Yeah, Burrell and Kevin Mathis are going to, now the bouncing of the ball is not going to win you any friends either. Child's doing that walking down the floor. Mathis and Burrell, Kevin Mathis, the official, really locked eyes in. And, and, uh, his leniency toward Burrell and how Burrell pushed the SEMO player at the time. Bears recognition, actually. He could have easily called it for a technical as well. And Harris himself gives Simo distance. Ten points for him. He got four and double figures for Simo now. now. Here comes Instant Energy Barnes into the game for Simo, and he's going to come bang the boards, and they're going to take another shot at Cole probably in some offensive set to try and, and exit him at the game playing with four fouls. I, I, the Barnes... Brasher, Branson rather, change out. Simo doesn't lose a lot on either end of the floor. Well, Barnes has been scoring support for both Harris and Russell. He gives them a third 10-point per game type of guy. And now Harris to the bench for Simo. And Caldwell's back in after he's holding that foot. I can't hit. And it was Barnes that had the defense. Yeah, those were the shots for Caldwell in particular that were falling in the first half, and it's just not been the case here in the second. Now this, I anticipate, you can tell by Brad Corn's call, this has got to be a shot inside the paint and deep in the clock. And not so much deep in the clock, and then again, Lindenwood throws it away. You can just really see the frustration. Uh, OBC tournament. That's about 9 o'clock Central, 10 Eastern. Brian Baroni steadily is building that SIE, SIUE program. And then we got a quick quick timeout by SEMO because it cannot get it in. Ursher. Up in suburban St. Louis. And Lindenwood looking for a 17-point comeback. And SEMO looking for a rematch with Tennessee State. In the split regular season series. Oh, how did that pass get through? Smart through the arms of Williams. Almost hit his face. Oh, getting late for Cole and Lyndon Wood and an That's offensive it. foul. And Cole is started in comparison to where we are right now. You know, we talked about how poorly Simo was shooting. They were down six or seven, I recall, and now they lead by 19. Well, there's the opening segment of the game. Linden Wood jumped out 7-zip. Simo settled in, led by four at halftime, and now plus 15 in the second half. Good look at Cole there. And a tough night Career for him. Over. Yeah. And Russell underneath at the scoop. You say that, but you wondered so many of these seniors... In terms of their classification, Williams running the floor easy. Some of them may be back or not, but you look at a senior like Cole and you see it's a really solid first half. But man, I tell you, Smart is really, he has to back out of that play. And he's turning the bench and saying, I want to get somebody in for me. I couldn't imagine with this lead why he's still in the game. Now he's going to talk to Brad Corn while action is live. Three to shoot. And that doesn't stick early. Oh, big man rebound. Simo counting down the seconds for rematch in the quarterfinals with Tennessee State. And yeah, tried the alley loop to early. And I tell you, one of the best players at this level, too, for Lindenwood. He did. 
And that's a great point because Kyle Gerdeman earlier today was talking about just the guard play overall in this conference and how it took a while for Caldwell to kind of get in sync with it. it. Took a while for that guy to get in sync with him as well, Trimble. And when they did, he felt like he had as good a guard tandem uh, as he could possibly have in his first season in this conference. Good to see Trimble hit that shot. He's been non-existent since about midway through the first half. Simo took him away for stretches and took away Cole the entire game. On their way to an opening round win tonight. And early, that's goaltending. Mamuvu calls for the slap. So looking ahead to tomorrow night, Southeast Missouri State, they beat Tennessee State by 17 in Cape Girardeau. A couple weeks later, early February, they went to Nashville, lost by 20. That was the game that had 11 technical fouls, and, and there will be some anticipation the next 24 hours of that game. Yeah, if you like chirping, let's tune in tomorrow night to the first game because these two teams do not back down from each other. And entirely different games on each other's home floor, and so and they played each other last year in the quarterfinals. And Simo won it by 14 points to go to the semis. So we get a 4-5 matchup. In Tennessee State, Simo tomorrow night, 6.30, right here. And ten on the timer here. And out of the hands of Tevin Gowans. And Lindenwood will get at least one more possession. And I'm watching the Simo bench, and it's, you know, it's real easy to, to look like that bench looks after winning a tournament game, but I remember stretches this season where they just didn't look like they were in sync. But once they got rolling after... The first two media timeouts of the first quarter have been pretty good since then. And it's short, and Simo can dribble it out. And Simo started the year 8-3. and three. Injuries, including to Kobe Clark, one of their best players. They finished losing five of their last seven, but convincing in the second half tonight to move on to the quarterfinals. That's a team for Brad Gordon. Clearly had the...